Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, I've put together sort of like the levels of songwriting with chords. And if you're an upcoming piano player or an aspiring songwriter, or if you've been doing something in the business for a while, do consider watching the video till the very end, where each of these levels, as I'm calling it, may not actually be actual skill levels but I'm just looking at it as ways you can grow your chord vocabulary. So each of these levels are supplemented by my handwritten notes so you could consider getting that on our Patreon page that will also help support the channel greatly. So do consider heading over to patreon.com and uh, there will be a lot of lessons on our channel for, the, for you first time viewers who've just stumbled on this lesson. So do consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting the bell icon for regular notifications if you like our channel. If you do that, you will not miss any of our content. Right guys, so let's get cracking with the lesson. So I'm going to take the, a simple chord progression in the key of C major and that brings me to level 1. Level 1 would be just use diatonic chord. So it's a simple concept where you take the scale of interest. Right now I'm taking C major. Okay, so in the C major scale you have the 1 chord, the 2 minor, the 3 minor, the 4 major, F major, the 5 major or dominant if you want to add that. Then you have the A minor which is your 6 minor, B diminished and that's pretty much it. So the first way of using chords while composing a song is to take just diatonic triads or diatonic harmony and build progression. So you can then tell yourself I want to do one, six, maybe four, five or one, na, 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 two, and na, 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 four, five. What you're going to guarantee is all of these will work well together because they are all part of the scale. So you need to remember a chart. In the major scale, 1, 4, 5 will be major chords, 2, 3, 6 degrees will all form minor chords because of the intervals they form. If you start with D, it will be a minor chord because your intervals are the ingredients which form the minor chord, namely the minor thirds between the first two notes. And with a major chord, it's the major third between them. And with a diminished chord, you have that tritone, which is a bit tense. So that's why each of these chords have a different vibe. So it's important to know, okay, my major chords are 1, 4, 5. My minor chords are 2, 3, 6. My lone diminished chord, if ever I use it, which is rare in a pop song, will be the seven, uh, seventh degree. Okay, so we've got a list of diatonic chords then when you build chord progressions you could pull them out of a hat by you know just randomizing them that's one way but you could also look at maybe you have a tune in your mind which you already came up with and then you try and figure out a set of chords so check another one or you see, a lot of them, all of them seem to work. Or, but you need to see what you like and what doesn't clash or what makes the melodies pop out best or give you the emotion you want. So, I'm choosing C major for now. So, that's C major. Also, I land on some notes like a C I can find a chord which kind of has that C in it so then it will be very stable or or you can find a chord which doesn't have the C in it that'll form that'll make it more interesting see E tends to sound a bit wrong E minor at least because there's no note which has that C landing note. But you can stay on C, but that's boring because you started with C. So F works. 
I'm going with A minor. I I kind of like that and that's B minor because of F. Then you have a G there. So A minor. Now I'm playing this on the melody on the piano and also singing the melody with my voice to give you an idea that. this is not necessarily a lesson where you have to always sing it if you are a musician composer who just plays instrumental music i think the concepts are very similar but the vibe of each instrument the the tonality of everyone's voice the texture of everything you work with will also inspire your melody and the chord choices and a lot of things so i'm going to leave it at that the first level of composing harmony will be with diatonic chords and with diatonic chords you need to realize that some will work really well with the tune so you have to consider the tune or you could look at diatonic chords uh using popular chord progressions for a start you can watch my video which which we'll put in the description where i've looked at 15 super popular chord progressions probably the ones you've heard most commonly so you could watch that we put it in the description and these this is how you just use diatonic stuff things from within the scale within the major scale and you make some music now let's move on to a couple of levels before you actually go beyond beyond maybe the diatonic realm beyond the scale you could consider bigger chords so if you take let's say a c major chord you can retain the mood of it kind of but add a note or two maybe you could go you could add a d so this makes it more sophisticated so we call this this as an add chord feels like if you're playing it with add chords you're not playing something which every regular composer plays right it just feels a bit different so you're adding either a 2 we can add you can even add a 4 uh so na 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 that's you're adding the 4 fr- from c the interval or you can even add a 6 Six, or you could add seven. We don't say add seven as a chord. We say just seventh chord. So you can do like a C major seventh. You can do a D minor seventh. These are all the diatonic seventh chords. So E minor seventh, F major seventh, G dominant seventh, A minor seventh, and then B minor seventh flat five. because it has a flat 5 there a minor 7th up there minor 3rd and that's the flat 5 so that's how uh, we name our chords and yeah these are all your extensions or added notes if you will you can even add more so i'd suggest you watch some of our other videos as well we've even we've even done an add chord versus suspended chord comparison you could check that out in our in the description that would be very helpful add chords or seventh chords is another nice way to take your journey forward as a songwriter it will give you more notes also to play around with like la na 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 because i'm playing an f add 2 that g is inspiring my melody so you could actually look at a scenario where you compose the chords first na 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 because of that sus for the na 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 and that's my tune na 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 that's an add 9 or an add 2 la ra re that's an add 6 la re ra 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 la that's an add sharp 4 but it's still diatonic la ra ra re ra re 
a minor sixth. Major seventh. That's an add nine. Sharp four. That was both a flat seven add. Sus four major third. If that's a sus four add four. Okay, so it gives you a bigger. It even though you just have seven notes in a scale, the concept of add chords or sus chords or extensions gives you a kind of a different tool kit. Even though it's still the same tools, come to think of it, it just feels like you have a lot more to work with. With these same old seven notes, which C major has to offer, we didn't go out of scale. We are still in the scale. So let's now move forward to another thing, which I think, as a songwriter, you will benefit: the idea of slash chords. Now, slash chords are are an incredible tool, which is not talked about that often in the field of music, especially in theory books. But if you think about it, slash chords will. Completely change the vibe of a major or a minor chord. So, if you're working with a diatonic si system, if you take C major chord and if you play C in the bottom, it's a C major chord. It has a C major vibe. But if you slash this, slashing basically means chords with a different base or a different root, if you want to call it that. So, if you take the other available chords of the C major scale. C C major chord, you'll see that there's E. So if I play E with uh, with the C major chord in the right hand, wait for it. It's going to move from something very stable to something very different. It's almost like it's wanting to go somewhere. And now it feels like F is the stable chord and. C major, which used to be stable, is no longer stable. It's like because it has that E bass, which wants to go to F. Then, if you take, let's say, C over G, that's the other note, C slash G. This seems to want to go to G major, doesn't it? So. C slash G wants to go to G, and then because G is the dominant chord, it eventually wants to come back to home, which is C major. That's really weird. So you have this progression, which is F major. It's a nice chord progression you can build just with. The C major slash chords and where they would want to naturally go. So C slash E, F major, C slash G, G major, and back to C major. Okay, so that's slash chords in a nutshell. Now you can even go beyond the diatonic world. You can go out of scale, and that's where we are going to analyze our future levels of songwriting. So let's now move forward. Now, before we move forward, it's exciting to know that you don't have to just play slash chords with the same triad notes. You can play like, let's say you you can play an F major with a G bass. Can make it very sophisticated. So this is just F major. This is doing its thing, F major. But you play the same F major in the right hand, and then you play G bass in the left. It's a very different sound. That also seems to want to go to C. So slash chords definitely up the game as a chord composer. So let's now try and leave the diatonic realm and look at other possibilities as a as a songwriter writing chords. Let's see how far we can take this concept. Right. So the next level of songwriting would be to basically borrow chords from parallel scales. So if you take the C major scale, 
you know all the chords we've been using them in this video now if you borrow chords from a parallel scale you have different parallel scales you can say parallel minor parallel dorian so what does a parallel thing mean in a nutshell it's the same root but you have a different set of chords because the parallel scale will not be major it has to be different same root different scale so if you borrow from maybe C minor or C aeolian you'll realize you have E flat A flat and B flat the new notes so you can automatically harmonize this scale you'll realize you have a 6 flat major you have a 7 flat major you have a 3 flat major you have a 2 diminished which you never had in the C major scale and the 4 minor and the 5 minor 4 minor 5 minor so how can we use this as uh, as a songwriter who's just made something on c major you want to add some more spice so let's look at what the borrowed chords have to offer you can make a chart the major and the minor chart under that and you will have a good idea of what you can borrow now that you know that you're still in the key of c but you're changing your scale to be c minor or c parallel minor in this case so you could do that f minor going to c that's a very what we call a minor plagal cadence so it's like at the end of a chord progression like could let your singer do his or her thing so that's borrowed from the natural minor or it i chose a lot of chords from the minor but if you do this in context i just like squeezing in that e flat at the chorus to make it more heavier or more braver sounding so if you want to borrow that that e flat you can do it now you know uh, in context with that e flat major chord being played only at that one point are you allowed to change your melody otherwise it's going to be very weird you'll be singing an e and an playing an e flat chord so whenever you're borrowing it comes with a little bit of responsibility you need to know those notes and sing or your melody on those notes or if you sang something which sounded a bit weird or out of context don't think it's out of context for all you know it may just be a borrowed chord which you had in your subconscious mind you know you never know how the mind will work maybe you heard a song or two or maybe you heard an album which had a lot of interesting chords yesterday and in your mind you're singing something very inspired from that album which i do very often and then you need to match chords so either you need to get chords with your melody which you you prepared or vice versa the chords are there first then the melody comes in so that's the conundrum a songwriter is generally faced with you don't know whether to start with the the tune or whether to start with the chord progression or maybe even the lyrics as well right so i don't look at that as a conundrum i would just say start with what comes organically or naturally first be it the chords be it the melody be it the rhythm maybe a groove can inspire everything maybe the lyrics can inspire you to make the song so let it flow there's no hard and fast rule or order of business to write a hit song or any song for that matter so hopefully this discussion is getting you to see that you either can do melody or you can do harmony it depends so with the borrowed chord concept you are primarily on major all the major chords 
can you borrow that sounded very different i'm sure for your ear so that's a borrowed from minor which is the 6 flat minor so that's 6 flat 7 flat c major which so many people have done or you can do you can do 3 flat 4 5 now do you have to borrow only from the minor no that will be a bit boring uh you can borrow from maybe the mixolydian scale as well which is just the same as major except the 7 flat that's major 7 that's the mixolydian so so you need to know the chords of that respective mode so c mixolydian will give you that b flat major F major, which both major and mixo had, C major, which both the major and the mixolydian scale had. So you have that one exciting chord, maybe in the chorus. So if your verse is like na 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 gives you a vibe for a new section and thus a new melody back to major okay so you can borrow from anything you can even borrow from a lydian scale so which is f sharp makes it lydian versus f which major had so lydian has f sharp so so f sharp makes it very interesting so more on borrowed chords most definitely in an upcoming video so do stay tuned to our channel let's now move forward to more ways in which you can create some very interesting chord progressions as a songwriter we've slowly gone out of the diatonic scale with borrowed chords now we are going to look at a very simple age old classical concept called as secondary dominant or secondary chords so a secondary chord is basically a tool where you just say i'm playing a chord now let's say this is my first chord c major and my third chord is a minor so that gets me to question what should be the second chord so the way i looked at least as a younger composer when i looked at the concept of secondary dominant chords i never i never knew what it was called of course i just looked at it as that kind of thing i would do in a song so i would do i would do it this way i'll take the first chord as c major let's say the third chord as a minor you may think this is the second but i'm in my mind thinking i have to put a second chord as well so i play c major something a minor okay so the question now is what is that second chord now most songwriters will play the second chord based on the melody maybe maybe the melody had some note which which sparked that second chord Uh, or maybe the second chord was related to the previous chord or the first chord but in this study i am here to uh, encourage you to play the second chord based on the third chord based on the next chord so you do c major forget about c major now you are targeting a minor so good way to kind of create a red carpet if you will for a minor Uh, to like present it as you know the important person of the pack is to play a chord which is its perfect fifth apart play a major chord or a dominant seventh chord in more particularly which is a fifth of the target so what is the target now a what is its fifth e so you would play an e major or e seventh we call this as a secondary chord because it's out of the c major realm and that takes you to an a minor so na 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 so it works in that sort of a scenario na 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 so you are allowed to kind of sing that 
make it a bit more bluesy or a bit more ballad rock ballad like or maybe you had a song which was very popish very run of the mill but with the secondary now combine it with the borrowed at the end so you can combine secondaries and borrowed to to write some incredible uh, chord progressions which you know if you're an old school music lover if you've listened to the beatles they've done it all if you listen to music from the 80s the power ballads they've done it all if you've looked at classical music by bach and beethoven and mozart they've also done it all it's just that a video like this may be exciting for for a modern day perspective if you're writing music in 2023 which is the year of making this video for a modern day audience who hasn't heard of all that other uh, who haven't heard of all that amazing stuff in the past you're kind of giving them the future because they don't know what there was earlier or what the beatles did or a better way to look at it would be to encourage them by writing these chord progressions to appreciate music from the earlier the great generations of the past so the way i look at it is even though i'm ranting right now would be music doesn't necessarily evolve it doesn't get better and better and better according to me it just kind of goes through cycles or spirals if you think about it because it's kind of rehashing itself it's rehashing old content going back into the future so i think this tends to happen with not only music pretty much all forms of art in general so just keep that in mind a lot of these concepts are very age old concepts but we try to bring them into the forefront and thrive in a generation which has something which you know is getting rather boring come to think of it diatonic chord progressions is getting rather boring so i hope you're also realizing that this takes a fair amount of theory so you need to write stuff down and a uh, lot of the relevant videos uh, which can augment this lesson are found in the description we have covered a lot on secondary dominant chords where i've used some nice a popular song examples to kind of mess around with it a bit and also reharmonize it that's also a word which is used a lot in music so that was about secondary chords it's a fifth of the target chord where you're thinking what chord do i play based on the next chord not necessarily the previous chord or the current melody uh, context okay the last thing i have for you is where you can kind of add chords to a progression so if you have let's say let's say these chords were spaced a bit farther apart four times each chord now you kind of feel the boredom right setting in because it's four beats of that same chord too bad but getting a bit boring so you can try and figure out a way to add chords in between so one technique i've already told you for secondary chords is find the fifth no it becomes a wise man say right or a variation of that so because you have that time between the chords you can make more chords inside the chord progression so one tool is just bring in the five of the target you know five of the c major what's my target a minor so what's what's going to come in between the five of a which is e seventh and then a minor now i want to go to f so what's preceding f c right because c is the perfect fifth of the f which is the 5 of g lady and then g comes back to 
सी ओके यू कैन ऑल्सो प्रिसीड द फाइव बाई अ टू ऑफ द टारगेट सो यू कैन डू instead of doing only the e7 going to a minor i'm doing i'm doing two chords before that a minor land which is c b e a which is in the circle of fifths the neighbors b e a <coughs> but depending on the vibe you can make the two either major minor diminished you can make the five also well generally major but in some cases it could also be minor so you can make some very sophisticated chord progressions using non chords they are not fancy jazz chords they are just normal triads and one or two extensions of sevens here and there i guess so le da da ru ru now my target is f you can do a 2 of f which is g minor uh the 5 of f which is my target which is it c and then <clears throat> go to f so so these additional chords give you more options when you're writing a melody especially when you're doing it as a songwriter would which is like a chicken and egg scenario you don't know what's going on first there's it's almost like parallelly chords and melodies are projecting forward and you have to just catch the bus so to speak because time is also crucial as a writer you don't want to brood over what you make you like to kind of my advice would be just to go with the flow see where it takes you and you get to a product which 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 you get that internal gut feeling as we say that the product is really good you but it's always good to sit on it the next day and refine it no doubt but the feeling you get when you've achieved something and it it just has a vibe which appeals to you is very important so i'd rather not stop it or question yourself while you do all these things you need to make it get it out there and if it if it sucks the next day or if you just don't like it so what you can try again so that's that's the advantage of writing music there's no win or lose it's just a matter of making stuff which either you like or you dislike at the time and maybe the stuff you dislike you will like in the future so uh, don't lose your compositions another advice i would have is to record this record the journey record the conclusion always and back it up back up your recordings we tend to lose hard drives a lot these days so uh, do, you don't want to write things in books you know because you may lose the book also so record things back it up respect your work that's the most important if you want to make music you have to respect your work whatever you do right guys thanks a ton for watching the lesson will have a lot of supplementary notes on patreon do consider getting yourselves a copy and we have a lot of exciting stuff which happens in in person lessons at our school which i also conduct as a faculty you have lessons like music factory where we go deep dives into a lot of songwriters and your favorite artists which you can also vote for in class so do consider a regular 6 uh, month semester at nathaniel where you can customize it in a way which suits your learning level your learning needs and also your schedule your time schedule and there are also video courses a lot of ways to learn at our school it's not just a youtube channel we are actually supported or backed primarily by nathaniel school of music which has regular courses for children for adults for seasoned musicians of all ages and we do it virtually as well as in person in our city of bangalore hope you can meet us soon Cheers catch you in the next one